So there's been a lot of talk lately blaming Bitcoin for ransomware. I've seen op-eds, I've seen Twitter threads, I've seen podcasts, and I don't actually believe that is the case. So in order to actually understand my point of view, we're going to have to go through the history of ransomware. So to understand that, we need to understand what is ransomware. And to understand what ransomware is, I'm going to need you to put the likes in the bag or this video is going to get encrypted. Nah, I'm just kidding, but ransomware has been around since about the 90s, but it didn't really take off as a criminal enterprise until 2012. Now, the mathematicians of you out there will understand that Bitcoin is invented in 2009 and 2012 is later than 2009. Therefore, ransomware became a main thing after Bitcoin. So the logic follows that ransomware becomes a big thing after Bitcoin. The ransomware that we know today uses Bitcoin. So if we put one and one together, we can make three with Bitcoin equals ransomware. But that's actually not what happened. What happened was the very start, there was ransomware which would use obscure payment methods like money pack, Western Union, even th silly things like Amazon gift cards. And that is the initial ransomware that actually kickstarted this trend. Later on, the ransomware moved on to using Bitcoin because Bitcoin is just simply easier. So because ransomware initially hit home users and they wouldn't know if the user was a millionaire or living paycheck to paycheck, what they would do was set a fairly low ransom amount, which would get them a good percentage of payment. The ransom amount would usually be 100 to $300 and the percentage of users which paid was about 3%. So they would have to hit thousands and thousands of computers to make decent money. Now the problem with scaling ransomware to thousands of computers is if they're buying, say, Amazon gift cards, you need to check if that gift card is real and works before giving them a decryption key. And that's just not scalable. You can't have someone dealing with thousands and thousands of victims a day checking all their individual payments and decryption keys. Coin Ransom came about a year later. People figured out that with the way blockchain works, they could write automated software that would know the second they paid and if they paid the right amount and then hand them over the decryption key. So they had this huge scalable system that was entirely hands off. So that did actually improve ransomware a lot, but that isn't the ransomware we see today. They decided to take another leap and that was to targeting corporations. You see 3% of, of victims paying is very, very low and it's not a lot of profit. So what they figured out they could do is go after major multinational corporations and there's a good chance that at least 50% of them would pay. And because the corporations were extremely rich, they wouldn't be paying $100 to $300. They would be paying $100,000 to $3 million. So they started focusing on companies. Now let's assume you could click your fingers and Bitcoin goes away. I don't believe that to be possible. The decentralized nature would only allow us to ban exchanges and not Bitcoin itself. But let's say you can just get rid of Bitcoin. That ransomware back then, when they would hit thousands and thousands of computers and automate the payment, that would, that would cease to function. They would have to go back to more manual tasks of checking gift cards or money pack signatures or whatever payment method they use. But the thing is, that's not common anymore. Because they're going after companies, there is actually no automated payment. When a company gets hit with ransomware, the group doesn't give them a ransom amount. It just gives them an email to contact them and then they'll go back and forwards and negotiate the payment amount. Because they're only hitting a couple of companies at a time, they don't have to worry about scalability and automation. And because they're actually manually negotiating the ransom amount with each company, the actual automated side of Bitcoin is not helpful to them. So many people will say without Bitcoin, well, how would the ransomware groups get paid? And the answer is probably in US dollars. Prior to ransomware and Bitcoin, most of the big cybercrime groups did bank fraud they would hack into companies' bank accounts and transfer out hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of dollars. Then they'd launder this money through a bunch of mules' bank accounts and then receive the end payment in their personal bank accounts, which they could then distribute to their, affi their affiliate. But the fact of the matter is, actually, most of these major ransomware groups were doing bank fraud prior to ransomware. So it's not like they don't know how to launder money in US dollars. They just choose to use Bitcoin because it is easier. If Bitcoin went away, there is no reason they could not go back to just pay the money into this bank account. People have said things like, 
oh, you can't handle amounts as big as ransomware amounts when it comes to traditional banking. Absolutely you can. Cyber criminals have done it. Some of the biggest bank fraud operations have been able to take hundreds of millions out of bank accounts and then launder it through the banking system. Now, some of the other arguments are, oh, when you're doing bank fraud, the victim doesn't know. They're not going to report the payment because you're, you're sneaking it out without their knowledge. But that's the same for ransom. Most victims do not contact the police. Police's job is not to help you. The police's job is to stop crime. Now, sometimes stopping crime might help you, but if their interests are opposite to yours, then they will go ahead and do whatever it is they need to do. Now, everyone has seen those TV shows where someone's kids get kidnapped and they call the police and the kidnappers say, bring the money alone. And then of course they have the police all hiding in the bushes. The kidnappers see the police and the whole thing falls apart. Well, while that is like a dramatic and overly exaggerated example, that kind of thing happens all the time in cybercrime. I remember a case where uh, back when consumer ransomware was a thing, it hit someone's home computer and they called the police. The police went, they found the ransomware site and then they took it down. And that meant that not only could that one victim not pay the ransom and get their uh, data back, it meant that all the victims of that one ransomware now had lost their data forever. And the fact of the matter is that police are not necessarily there to help you or your business, they're there to stop the bad guys. So many companies will not contact the police, at least until after they have already negotiated the ransom. A lot of the bank fraud gets reversed because the company notices the stolen money and they call the bank up just in time or the bank notices it and they're able to reverse the payment. Now the payment isn't going to be detected for fraud because it's not fraudulent. The payment is intentional. If the bank calls up the ransomware victim and is like, oh, we've noticed this much money going out of your account. Do, uh, do you need that reversed? They're going to say no because they want their decryption key. Now, when it comes to ransomware, if the bank was to detect this payment and then freeze the money and the company now didn't get their decryption key and their business failed, well, who are they going to take that out on? The ransomware group or the bank? It's going to be the bank because they got in the way of what was in their eyes otherwise a legitimate transaction. We pay the ransomware group, we get back our data. And then the bank said, sorry, no, all your data is gone now. We're going to seize this payment. Not to mention, if we assume the bank was allowed to seize the payments for ransomware, then they're not going to catch all of them. They're going to catch a small subset. And that's not going to lead to less ransomware. That's going to lead to more ransomware as they try and make up for the lost payments. So this idea that just getting rid of Bitcoin and then ransomware goes away is just insane. One of the other arguments is, well, Bitcoin makes it harder to not get caught. And there is some truth to that. You can just create a Bitcoin account without adding a name or an address to it. It's not tied to anything, but the entire blockchain is public. You can see the money move from one side to the other. So the gangs need to launder it. They need to find ways to break that chain of transactions so that it can't be followed. And this is money laundering. It is the same thing you do with a banking system. You're trying to break the chain so that someone cannot follow the money from point A to B and catch you. Is it easy with Bitcoin? Probably. It's a lot less mature, so there aren't as many tools to tracking that kind of activity. But does that mean that if Bitcoin wasn't there, they wouldn't be able to launder the money? No, because they did bank fraud. They've laundered money f through the banking system for decades. There is no reason that they suddenly now need Bitcoin to do their payments. Now people have said, oh, they'll probably get caught because it's a lot harder to launder money with conventional banking. But we don't actually know how many gangs are still operational because they're unknown versus unknown but have not yet been captured. And the difference is important because the standard way to deal with foreign criminals is to not publicly charge them. And this is actually what happened to me. I was living in the UK at the time the US wanted to charge me. So they did something called a sealed indictment. And all that is, is basically a document which charges you in secret. Then when I came to the US, they unsealed the charges and arrested me. We don't know how many foreign ransomware operators are currently indicted, but are yet to come into US territory. We just assume because we haven't heard of ransomware operators being charged that they haven't been, but it makes no sense charging someone if they're living in Russia 
or some other extradition country where they're not going to come to the US. And the fact of the matter is most ransomware operators know better than coming to the US because every time one of them does, they usually get arrested. Now there is actually a public case where a ransomware operator was indicted. Um, I believe it was for political reasons and he is still operational now. So this idea that, oh, if Bitcoin went away, then they'd all not be anonymous enough and they'd get caught. No, because enough of them are living in Russia or other non-extradition countries where even if they are known to the authorities, they can still operate freely. Then the third argument is, well, the groups behind ransomware, they know how to launder money, but they contract contractors to hack the networks and to profile the systems. And you have this big affiliate network where everyone is getting paid in Bitcoin. But we had that before Bitcoin. I remember back about 10 years ago, it was Liberty Reserve the uh, whichever group was behind the main activity that made money, say bank fraud, they would launder the money, deposit it into usually a shell company bank account, and then everyone would get paid for that bank account. You would actually be being paid out of the already cleaned money, so you didn't have to worry as much about having to hide your tracks. Whereas when you're being paid with Bitcoin, that Bitcoin usually comes directly from the ransomware wallet, so now each individual contractor is responsible for laundering their own money. So in a way, it was actually easier back then when you already just received pre-cleaned money and you could say whichever payment method you would want to receive it by. At the end of the day, the reason ransomware groups use Bitcoin is simply because it's easier, not because it is the only possible thing they could do. It is a standard case of take the path of least resistance. So if we were to just nuke Bitcoin, would ransomware go away? No. Would there be less ransomware? Who knows? But what I do know is it would be crazy to destroy a trillion dollar market cap system that's invested by banks, companies, and retail traders in the hopes of slightly inconveniencing some ransomware operators.